Hey everybody, it's John Morley and welcome to my channel, Positive Vibrational Waves. It's great to be back with you again on another Sunday evening. And tonight, what we're going to talk about is how your thoughts and actions actually affect other people and their responses to you. Now, we've been talking a lot about uh, how energy affects things in the world, but what's really important to understand is that when you have a positive outlook and when you actually send out positive energy, and there have been studies on this, that people can actually feel the negative and the positive of you in a room. And this is important because if you're sending off positive energy, you're going to greatly affect the situation. If you come into a room and you're negative, the person's going to be able to sense or feel that or just know that something is wrong. So how do you be positive all the time? Well, we talked about being in a peak state. The most important thing that you can do and the easiest thing to do is to have gratitude, okay? Now, I know we talk about this and we beat it to death a lot, but it's really true. Just be grateful for whatever you have. Be grateful for the situation if something's not going the best way. Just be grateful for all the things that are going well. And focus on more of those good things and those things that maybe are not going well are going to basically dwindle to the side and they're not going to seem as important and you're not going to put energy on them. And by you not putting energy on them, guess what's going to happen? You're going to focus on the positive and that's going to make your interaction with the other person go a lot better. So let's talk about one way you can do this. Well, maybe you're having a particular interview with someone or you're meeting someone for the first time and you want to have a positive impression. One of the things I like to tell you to do is, you know, to be comfortable about what you're going to talk about. If it's a business situation, you know, know a little bit about the other person, maybe do a little bit of research. And then um, when you meet with the person, again, worry about becoming interested in the other person. Don't worry about you being interesting. Worry about being interested in the other person. That's the most important. So find them interesting. Don't worry if you're interesting or not. Just take interest in them. And they're going to sense that you are a very good listener, whether you are or not. Because when you actually take that type of effort and you put the onus on the other person and you just pay attention to them and you you praise them and you just, just take a little bit of attention and you focus on things. Maybe they're telling you a story, but, you know, be interested in the story. Be interested in what they're doing. I'm not telling you to be false, but just be genuinely interested. And by you being genuinely interested, guess what's going to happen? They are going to gravitate towards you. Just show a little bit of interest. You know, a lot of times people say, hey, John, how do I remember somebody's name? It's very difficult. I get it. So if you're not great with names, we talked about techniques in other videos, but a real simple thing you can do is put some emphasis in the in the name. So if the name, let's say, is Morgan something, go ahead and maybe ask, well, how do you spell your first name? M-O-R-G-A-N. And how do you spell your last name? Uh, Ventrite, V-A-N-T-R-I-T-E. That's an interesting name. Um, does it have any type of meaning? I'm always curious when I hear a name for the first time. Does ventrite mean anything? Is there? Oh, yes, it does. It means that we were the leaders in our country and it was any other. So you get the idea. So you want to draw some inference. Remember when we talked about having uh, building blocks? Well, when you build something on a good foundation that already exists, the structure is going to become stable. If you build something on a weak foundation, then you're going to forget it. And also, it's not going to become very stable, and you're going to forget what it is you're talking about. Now, when you're meeting with someone, just be interested in the person, what they're doing. You know, just try to mirror what they're doing. You know, don't go crazy about it, but just listen to what they're saying. Take interest in what they're talking about. Don't interrupt them. And then after you've showed interest in them, they're going to come around to you and ask you some questions. The whole goal is that you're going to speak less than what you're actually listening. And that's important. So we were given two ears so that we could listen more and speak less. And if you're the one, I always talk about this when you text people, 
is that if you're the one that's in blue or in green, well, then that means that the conversation is really not a two-way conversation. It means that you are taking more control and you're not really giving the other person a chance to talk or to text. So a good good rule of thumb is if someone says, you know, how was your day? And you respond, my day is fine. How was yours? That's great. You're still in, you're still not in the blue or the green. And then they come back and they ask you a question. Um, my day was great. I went to do some errands or I went to watch a movie. That's great. They gave you some senses, a sentence. Now you respond back, this weekend was pretty mellow for me. I went to a fair and I had fun. I also got to try a new candy I never had before. So again, keeping it very similar within a word or two of the sentence so that you don't become in blue. If I was to talk longer and say, oh, this weekend was amazing. I went hiking. After I went hiking, I went to a fair. After the fair, we went out to this new restaurant. Then I tried this food I never had before, and it was just so amazing. Then I went to the gym. Okay, so you're over-talking the other person. You want to realize that it should be a two-way exchange. Now, if they say to you, like if you said, how was your day? And they said, fine, you could say, great. And then wait for them to come back. It's very important when you're starting the conversation that you let the other person talk and that you type, back with the same amount of text, roughly within a, a word or two, because otherwise the other person is going to perceive you as someone that is, you know, not going to give anybody any edge room. And so whether you're talking or whether you're texting, the message here is that you want to be cognizant of how much the other person is talking, how little the other person is talking. Maybe you're in a situation and somebody asks you a question like, uh, we're at a restaurant. What do you think of the food? Oh, the food's great here. Yeah, I really like the, um, the chicken rollatini. Yeah, I like the filet mignon. And you're kind of talking back and forth. If they talk to you long and say, well, gee, uh, how was your day? Oh, my day was great. I went here, then I went there, then I came back, then I had to go shopping, then I got to return something. And you get the idea it was a few minutes. How was your day? Oh, my day was good too. Well, my day was a little challenging. I started in the morning. I had to be with a customer and then the customer did something, but unfortunately um, we couldn't get the part they wanted. So then I had to go back. We got the part. Long story short, we actually got them satisfied. So they were really happy. Then I went and grabbed lunch and I tried this new place where I had a fajita and it was pretty good. Um, and then you ping it back to me. It just to be like a natural... Uh, ping pong back and forth. If you're taking too much or they taking too much and you're seeing it's not reciprocal, well, then it's basically time if you've done that and you notice they're not responding, then it's important for you to realize that and to stop. So if I talked a lot and now they say, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do later. And now they didn't mirror you and they took a lot less airtime. Okay. So I hope this was important. I know we've changed the format a little bit and we've gone back to once a week, which I've been getting lots of feedback has been great because I really want to give you uh, nuggets, if you will, that are going to be very useful in your life. I uh, just got a brand new camera, which I'm going to start using probably in the next few days. Hopefully by Sunday, I'll be using it uh, for the next showing. And we're going to be able to do more things than just this. We're actually going to be able to do some experiments, and I'm going to explain to you about how you can check some of these things. So if you're a doubter or you're a skeptic and you're one that doesn't really believe logic, uh, we're going to be able to explain some things so that even the doubters out there are going to be able to say, wow, this stuff really makes sense. But really, our energy, our world is all energy. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you like my content, I would really appreciate it if you'd give us a thumbs up, if you'd like the channel, um, if you would subscribe. And then, of course, if you would actually go ahead and just smash that um, bell at the bottom right. And what will happen is YouTube will then be notified so that every time a new video is published, they'll send you uh, an alert telling you that I've just published new content. If you have an idea, a question, or a comment about any type of um, a video you'd like me to produce for you, just let me know uh, in the comments below. Just type below, and I'll be happy to do that for you. Again, I'm trying to give you content that is short and that is able to be applied in your life without a lot of practice. So just to summarize today, we learned that it's important 
to talk, but it's important to listen and it's important to have an equal balance. If we don't have the equal balance, we might be sought out as somebody will say, well, gee, you know, he talks too much or uh, he never gives me a chance. And people might feel intimidated because they don't know how to interrupt that conversation. Um, I was at a networking event one time and I was talking to somebody, not even a minute or two, and the person was actually very rude. The person came up and actually said, excuse me, and interrupted. He's like, well, uh, we're all here to network anyway, so that's what we're here for. But it was kind of rude because I was only talking with the person for a minute or two. It wasn't that long. And I just thought that was very rude. And my perception of that person was very low, and I had no interest in to talk to him. So it's important to be cognizant of what you're doing and also that what you're doing in your life with people personally is going to affect what you do with people publicly. So if you realize that a situation or a conversation should be that type of give and take or flow, great. The only time this doesn't apply is if you're giving a lecture or if you're trying to explain something to someone, then you're not really, um, let's say, bound by these rules. So somebody says to me, John, you know, well, how do you bake a cake? And I go through all the steps and they understand it's going to be pretty long. They might be taking questions. They might say, gee, well, what was step six again? Or if I was giving somebody technical instructions. OK, so what you need to do to clear out your cache is to go into Explorer or Firefox, put on your cookies, click on it, or you're going to click and delete your cookies by going to a certain directory. And people understand what that's going to be like. But if you're asking somebody common questions or you're trying to get to know someone, people will oftentimes become intimidated because they're going to see you as having the upper hand. And we always want to have a balance. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it has been amazing being here with you this evening. I hope you are really enjoying the content I provide. Share it with your friends, colleagues, associates, and do like the channel, do subscribe, do smash that bell. And I'm going to be here next Sunday, and we'll have another great topic to talk about. But until then, I wish you a very happy, healthy, uh, successful week. And I hope that all your minutes, your hours, and your seconds are filled with the most tranquility, the most peace, the most joy, the most understanding, and the most insight of inner knowing that you are an amazing being and one that truly is blessed and one that has the power and ability to manifest the desires that you've had deep in your heart. I'm John Morley, and thanks so much for listening to Positive Vibrational Waves, and we'll see you next Sunday night.